All right, we return to an earlier story. The management of data has been highlighted as one of the main flaws in the country's parole system. Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamola said today after a justice cluster meeting that the focus was on finding solutions. Now, this comes after 12-year-old Michaela Williams, 8-year-old Tasney van Veik, and 7-year-old Regan, uh, Re Regan Gertzer were all murdered, allegedly, by men on parole. So let's talk about the parole system and what this all means. So we're joined now by the chairperson for the National Council for Correctional Services, Judge Siraj Desai from our studio in Cape Town. Judge, thank you for being with us. Very quickly, can we start with an explanation of what the parole system is meant to achieve? Let me just make one point very really clear. The offenders that were involved in the two cases, certainly the one, he was not out. He, he, he was not released on parole for any uh, for amnesty or any other reason like that. He was out on parole in the ordinary course of events. But the problem that stepped in was that he was he escaped parole. He was in parole for a period of about a year, and then he disappeared. And that's when the alleged offence was committed. There was a systemic failure in this regard, and we have to look into that. But let me just emphasise that he was not released yeah. on amnesty when Judge, he Judge, are you talking about the alleged murderer of Tasney van Veik? That's right. So and he uh, had absconded. That's the one. the what, other one, I'm not familiar mean? with the details. Mm. He had absconded. Let's remain with that one. What does that mean that he had absconded? He was out on parole. And parole means you're monitored on a regular basis. He was being monitored. And at one stage... He disappeared and could not be traced. That's when the offence was com allegedly committed. Mm -hmm. He disappeared he, he's from Uniondale or somewhere like that, and he disappeared somewhere in Elsie's River and could not be traced. That was the problem. That's a systemic failure which is serious and which warrants attention. We are taking steps to av avoid that sort of occurrence mm -hmm. in the future, but it's unavoidable. So it makes you think that many others may have absconded. Are, are there details? Now, the majority of uh, parolees, in fact, up to 90%, abide by their parole conditions. They abide by their parole conditions simply because if they do not do so, they return to jail. So the majority of instances, parole, parole works. In this instance, instance, it failed, and that requires some attention. Mm. All right, so let's clarify. This is a conditional release. Uh, you can be released from prison, but on certain terms, you have to check in. Uh, with the police, etc., you've outlined that the decision to release someone on parole should be based on how dangerous they are. But the minister today said that not enough information is being given to the parole boards. What information is lacking? There, there are different categories of offenders and a different mechanism by which offenders are released. If you're sentenced to life imprisonment, then you can only be released on certain limited circumstances. That sort of offender, that type of offender, would come to us at the National Council and we would make recommendations to the minister with regard to the likelihood of him reoffending the other problems which are attendant upon a serious offender. In this instance, because the sentence was not a life sentence, it was a determinate sentence, a sentence of years, the, he was looked at by the local parole board. The parole board then found him suitable to be released. But I must emphasize, though, that in this instance, he was not simply released upon completion of his half, half his sentence, as is the usual practice. He served considerably more than half his sentence, but he was eventually released on parole. The problem that the minister highlighted was that in cases such as these, and, and that's where uh, we come in to refine the parole system, Unlike in lifers, they don't have reports from psychologists, psychiatrists, and that, and that sort of professional to determine the suitability of a person being released on parole. That's done purely by the parole board with assistance of police and local representatives. You must remember that in South Africa, the parole system has been democratized the last 15 years. A parole board sits to hear each parole application after he served the statutory minimum period of uh, period required, and then they decide the suitability of him and the safety of him releasing yeah. him into the community. 
but the decision is made by a parole board which consists of somebody from the Department of Correctional Services, hopefully a representative from the police, and community representatives. The community has a direct input into the lease an offender, of an offender. Okay, but, but you're saying more no importantly, experts are we have involved. Victims, not, not at all time, because yeah. it's a very costly process to get an expert. But we do have, in, in, in the, the parole system, uh, generally, we do have uh, an input from various people who yeah. come to the hearing. So, so Judge Hacker... I'm oh, sorry, what I was saying, you, you distracted me there. Can I just complete that thought? Sure. The, the victims have a right to be represented or make a contribution to the parole process. That occurred in a number of high-profile matters. If a victim is denied the opportunity to make a contribution, as the minister highlighted this morning, then there's the parole review system. If you're unhappy with the release of an offender on parole, the victim or his family, his or her family, they can appeal to the minister or the commissioner or the inspecting judge, then they would uh, alert me to it, and the National Council would then hear a review of somebody being released yeah. on parole and they could ask for them, their views to be heard. The views in terms of the victim's charter are taken very seriously and very often result in a offender uh, uh, serving a greater portion of his sentence. So, Judge, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that many victims say they aren't even notified. Um, do I have a right to be notified if I was raped or if somebody in my family was murdered by someone who's then up for parole? Uh, do I have that right? Absolutely. And am I often, uh, would I be approached? Yes, absolutely. The law has changed over the last few years in this regard. They've been an offender is convicted of rape or murder, then, the, then there's a record made of the address, the contact address of the offender, and you are meant to be con contacted when the parole hearing takes place. The, the older, the years, in the earlier years, it was not done. There's no record of where the offender resides. And very often, rape cases, paroles, uh, parole hearings are heard 20 or 25 years after the event, and some people do not wish to attend the hearing. They do not wish to confront the, accuser, uh, the uh, offender. In other instances, they cannot be traced. So in most instances, though, we do get some input from yeah. the offender. It's called victim-offender dialogue. But there are instances where entire communities are involved. And the process is developed to the extent that where communities are offended, we have victim-offender mediation mediation between the offender and the community for the offender to yeah. count for what he has done. The system is, is advanced, it's sophisticated, but there are inherent failures which, which we are trying to root out. Okay, and so uh, it's a difficult process, but it's beyond yeah. the road. So, so can Unfortunately, we, can we end these two there, instances here yeah, in Cape Town yeah. give us a bad name. Well, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Obviously, it's not working if we have a series of murders uh, by people who were released on parole. And you're saying that the experts are not included in that process. What is being done? The minister was saying that there would be more I'm not information saying... for parole. Uh, let me finish, please. That The minister was saying that there would be more information for the parole boards. What information is that? What is being done and how quickly can the situation be turned around? Yes. I'm... I'm not saying that in this instance there was no report from any expert, but in, in the instance of lifers, we have a great deal of information before we consider the release of an offender. In the sentence, where sentences are 12, 10 years, uh, I'm not sure that there's sufficient information available for the release of an offender. There should be, and I've made the strong recommendation to the minister, and the minister agrees that in every instance involving child murder or rape, there should be a report from an expert. It's not a question of time, it's a question also of available resources. We, South Africa is a vast country, and we do not have psychologists and criminologists in every part of the country. So uh, yeah. we do the best we can. But, but, but in as the a principle, mm. in, in, the in, meantime, in instances where these, these absolutely brutal offenses are committed, they should not, an offender should not be released without a proper 
risk analysis being done. Yeah. And that's what we hope to achieve. So, so you're saying that this is a goal, but in the meantime, can the minister say that nobody should be released with, without that input from experts if somebody has been involved in murders and in, in child-related crimes before? Does he have that authority or will we just sort of go on as it is and, and hope that things get better in future? No, absolutely. Yeah, the minister has given an undertaking to have facilities available for the evaluation of each serious offender. I think that can be done. It's done in the instances of lifers very effectively, although we delay, we often delay the release of a life over years, uh, making sure that we have proper reports before us. In the case of the lesser offenses, where people are sentenced to determinate sentences, it's possible to do that. The minister's given us the commitment that he will endeavor to do that, and it can be immediately implemented. Save, of course, where resources and access to certain parts and certain uh, correctional centres, such facilities are not available. All right. Uh, thank you very much. So I think that was a really useful discussion into how the parole system works. That was a chairperson for the National Council for Correctional Services, Judge Siraj Desai, saying that uh, the minister today giving an undertaking that more resources will be made available. So at least experts, psychologists uh, can give input before somebody is released on parole when they are involved in heinous crimes in the past. And of course, we've seen some of them involved in heinous crimes once they are released.